Generally, there's four or five components to an impaired driving investigation. First off, we would have to have a reason to believe that somebody uh, was operating the vehicle while impaired. So it could be a call from the public indicating that the driver was driving erratically. It could be at a roadside checkpoint. Um, or it could be at a motor vehicle accident. So we would have to have a reason to have an interaction with the person. What are people like when they're in this room? Uh, we have a vast responses to people being charged with impaired driving. Again, again, it would depend on how much alcohol they have, or as we're going to talk about today, how much drugs. So it would depend on what type of drug or medication. At roadside, if I suspect that somebody has uh, consumed marijuana, uh, whether it's uh, a fresh odor or a stale odor, uh, sometimes we'll see marijuana debris in the vehicle. Uh, certainly uh, some signs in their eyes, such as dilated pupils, reddened eyes. I would do a standardized field sobriety test, and that consists of three batteries of tests, we'll say. Um, one is an eye evaluation, in which I determine um, how your eyes react to a certain stimulus and how I move that stimulus. Two, three. The other two tests that would be conducted at roadside would be um, a walk and turn and a one leg stand. Those are divided attention tests or psychophysical tests. 1011, 1012. And the premise behind it is that we ask you to do multiple things at the same time. Right. I think everybody can agree that when you're operating a motor vehicle, you have to be able to multitask or do more than one thing at a time, whether it's steer, change lanes, accelerate, brake. At the end of the evaluation, I have to make a determination, A, if the person is impaired, B, which uh, category the suspect is impaired by. Then we would actually do a demand for a urine sample. And uh, I've had evaluations come back or urinalysis come back where people have had up to 16 different drugs in their system. We're not fishing for evidence. We're not making things up. This is a standardized program. Every drug recognition evaluator does the evaluation the same way. The same criteria has to be met, whether it's in Canada, uh, the United States, they're using it in Australia, in the UK, um, we've trained people in China as well. So as long as everybody is doing the same thing, then the subjectivity is taken away. 